Hi, I'm Tony Gillam and I'm the producer of Rising Storm. Rising Storm is the standalone expansion for Red Orchestra 2 Heroes of Stalingrad. Now what that means is that anybody who gets Rising Storm will also be getting Heroes of Stalingrad multiplayer content, enabling players to jump from Heroes of Stalingrad maps directly to Rising Storm maps in their server browser. So let's go ahead now and take a look at some of Rising Storm's maps and also at some of the features which Rising Storm is going to be bringing and adding to the Red Orchestra 2 experience. So let's take a look at the first map which is Saipan. Here we can see members of the 4th Marines landing on the beach at Charan Kanoa. They landed in June 1944, about the same time as the Normandy landings. In the background there you can see the Sugar Mill, which is one of the final objectives for the US forces. As you can see, the Americans have got quite a lot of automatic and semi-automatic weapons there. Uh, this guy has the M1928 submachine gun. Uh, you can see a couple of M1 Garands there as well, and also M1 Carbide. This gives us one of the big design challenges for Rising Storm. How do we make people want to play Japanese? As you can see here spawning as Japanese inside the sugar mill, uh, this guy's a rifleman and uh, most of the Japanese soldiers are. So if you like playing rifles then Japanese is a great side to choose. But we've also added some other features to make people want to play Japanese, to make it fun for them. And in just a few moments, we're going to see the first of these features. Okay, he's moving out now into the depot in front of the sugar mill. And over on the left there in the warehouse, there are actually some Marines advancing. What we're seeing here is Japanese uh, riflemen planting his grenades as booby traps. He's using the percussion cap on the end of the grenade to trigger it. And in just a few moments we'll see what happens, although I think you can probably guess. Okay, an effective IED there. Okay, uh, as you can see, this is mostly an urban environment. Um, the next map that we're going to look at is a more traditional kind of desert island environment. So here we are on Betio, which is a more traditional kind of desert island environment. It's very sunny. You can see a lot of damage done by the pre-invasion bombardment. And again, we're spawning uh, as Marines. This time it's the US 2nd Marines. The enemy this time isn't the Imperial Japanese Army, it's actually the Special Naval Landing Forces, the SNLF, which are basically the Japanese Marines. So what we have here is a Marine versus Marine engagement. As you can see, the Americans are now taking the first of the caps. And now they're going to be pushing on towards the next cap. This is a very small island, so in fact the playable area covers most of the island. As you can see now, the Americans are pushing forwards towards that cap, and that's where the second Japanese trick up the sleeve comes into play. You can see some machine gun fire now. That's actually coming from over on the left. This is from an unexpected angle. This is uh, caused by a Japanese spawning in what we call a spawn bunker. The spawn bunker is a randomly appearing spawn location which will be activated when the Americans take an objective. This means that as well as advancing, the Americans also have the task of finding these bunkers off to the side and to the rear of their line of advance. Once they find them, as they have done here, they have to deal with it. In this case you can see that the guy is planting a satchel charge.
Okay, so that's a spawn bunker which is no longer going to be useful for the Japanese. It's been cleared out. Moving on now, you can see that the Japanese are now being pushed right back towards the end of the island and that's where another special Japanese feature comes into play, the Banzai Charge. Now the Banzai Charge is triggered when a group of Japanese infantrymen melee charge together. It has an effect on the enemy, it suppresses the enemy, making them harder to hit. It also uh, increases the stamina of the Japanese and means that they're less easily suppressed themselves. Generally, they're just badasses. Let's move on now to the next map, Hanto, in which the Japanese forces are crossing the Hanto River in New Guinea. Here we have the Imperial Japanese Army attacking positions held by the US Army. And just across the river there we have some entrenchments with heavy machine guns dug in. This is slowing down the Japanese assault quite seriously, so the commander has just called in some artillery. As you can see there are some suppression effects from the heavy machine guns here. Let's see what effect the artillery has on the defences. Okay, well that's going to pretty much clear out the trenches there. And now we can see the Japanese forces moving deeper into the jungle. One of the things you'll notice is that there is a lot of vegetation here. There's a lot of foliage and basically every bush could have an enemy hiding in it. This makes for some very tense gameplay. Okay, respawning now. Uh, you can see the commander. He's got the submachine gun. He's got the Type 100. This is a pretty rare weapon for the Japanese. Only certain classes will have it. Uh, but like all Japanese weapons, it does have the ability to have a bayonet attached to it. Okay, so now the Japanese are taking the village. And we'll be moving on now into the mangrove swamps. Here the swamp water is slowing down the Japanese a bit. It's making it a fairly arduous advance for them. The final map we're going to show you today is Iwo Jima. As you can see there is an offshore bombardment there and Mount Suribachi over in the distance there is getting pretty heavily bombarded. These are members of the US 28th Marines. They were the first ones to land on Green Beach. And the soldier you can see right now is carrying an M12 trench gun. It's really handy for close encounters. As you can see, the Americans have run up against a Japanese heavy machine gun. That's a Type 92, what the Americans called the woodpecker. You can probably hear why. And here's where we're going to see the second trick that Americans can use to clean out bunkers. The flamethrower. And another flamethrower. These flamethrowers are creating volumetric particle effects. Basically, they're filling up the entire bunker with flames. And to finish the job, we have the trench gun. Thank you for watching.